for coming in. So, um, hello everyone, and thank you for being here again. My name is Magda Bejarano uh, with OHCS, and I am here with my coworker Amanda King. Um, we are going to talk to you today about the funding opportunity for homeownership language access and community outreach and engagement. Um, I think hopefully you are in the right webinar. Um, I'm going to let Amanda introduce herself too, and we will both be sharing information with you today. So, Amanda. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda King. I will be the procurement specialist um, that will be assisting Magda with this um, homeownership language access community outreach and engagement. Bid. Um, I will be the single point of contact throughout the solicitation process. So if you need any assistance or have any questions, um, my contact information is stated on the title screen. Please feel free to reach out um, and get in contact with us. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so we have an hour today. We are going to try to cover some of the main aspects of the request for applications, the application process, and the grant. Um, and we will leave some space for questions from all of you. This webinar is being recorded, and we will share the link later so that you can revisit the information or share with others that may not be here today and are interested. Um, we will also publish a document with the questions that are asked today and the answers to those questions, plus the questions that Amanda receives later. Um, I am curious to know if there is anyone in the group today who has never applied for funding from OHCS before. Um, so if that's the case, please let us know in the chat. We want to know. Um, and also, um, yeah, if, if it's the first time, let us know, because a lot of this may sound really strange and new to you. Um, so um, feel free to use the chat. Um, thank you, Miguel. We see you. Um, and yeah, feel free to use the chat throughout the presentation for your questions. Um, when we get to the questions piece, you can unmute yourself and share your question. But I also want to encourage you to write the question in the chat if you are able to, so that we can better um, capture all the questions. We'll be taking notes throughout the presentation. OK, so that was a long introduction. Uh, also, Krista, we see you in the chat. Uh, um, uh, from Apano, uh, awesome. So we're really excited to see you um, interested in this opportunity. So I'm going to get started. Um, and again, we'll leave the questions for um, the end of the presentation. Um, Amanda, like she said, is the single point of contact. She will be able to answer any questions related to the opportunity and the application process. Okay, let me see how can I advance to the next slide. Sorry. Here we go. Okay, uh, I'm going to start by framing this funding opportunity. The goal of this grant is to deliver more culturally responsive homeownership services and to help increase the visibility of these services that exist uh, by communities of color and communities that have historically been underserved or face more barriers to access service. So uh, really, again, it's about tailoring the services that some of your organizations already have and making them more visible and accessible for our communities. Um, we hope to help providers like you with the cost of facilitating language access so that more communities and people who don't have high proficiency in English can still access and benefit from your services. We want to support you expand your community outreach and engagement, and we want you to or to support you tailoring your programs to be more culturally and community responsive. The grant um, is anticipated to end uh, on June 30th or 20, of 2025. 
And by this date, all the funds that are granted must be spent and all the services and purchases that you make through the grant need to be received by the end of this date. This is important because we cannot um, prepay for services for years to come. We uh, need the funds to be used during this time period. The maximum amount of each grant is going to be $70,000. Um, you can up to that amount request the amount that is appropriate for you and for your organization. Um, I have this chart um, showing how the grant is distributed. So within the grant amount, you can use 10% for administrative costs and you can use an additional 13% to help covering the cost of the staff um, to implement the activities of the grant. Okay, um, just taking a quick look at the chat. Thank you for the questions. Um, okay, so to be eligible, you must be one of these four types of organizations. You must be a nonprofit, um, a housing authority, a local government, or a federally recognized tribe. Um, the specific definitions of these types of organizations are in the Oregon statutes that are cited there. So if you have any questions about whether your organization meets the criteria, we invite you to revise these statutes. And you also must be a provider of home ownership services or programs. Um, so that is really key for the solicitation. And you must serve households that have income um, under the 100% of the area median income of the area that you serve. So if you serve statewide, you must serve um, households with income under the AMI of the state. If you serve a group of counties or a county or a city, you want to make sure that the, the households or individuals that you serve are under this income threshold. Um, here are some of the important days, dates for this solicitation. Um, the pre-application conference is today. Um, you have time between today and May 17 to review all the materials um, and send any questions that you may have about the process or any requests for clarification. You would send those to Amanda to her email address that we shared at the beginning and we'll share again today. Those questions need to be received by 4 p.m. Um, on May 17th. Then we will respond to those questions by May 24th. Um, there is a protest period if any organization uh, feels like there's an aspect of the process that needs to be challenged. Um, the schedule for that is a little variable, I would say, is defined in these Oregon rules. So. Um, also, we encourage you to visit that, to review it, and to let us know if you have any questions. The last day to apply is June 7th at 4 p.m. So we have over about a month for you to complete the application and send it to us. Um, we intend to let grantees know of their awards by the 12th of July. Um, and then there's also a period uh, to protest any awards um, defined in, in Oregon rules. We encourage you to review that again and ask us any questions, any specific questions that you may have. Mm, I would say that because this is a very regulated process, especially for the organizations that are here applying for the first time, these uh, the procurement rules are very strict in some ways. Uh, so it is very, very important that you send your questions and apply within the time frames uh, because unfortunately, any minute after uh, the deadline, we may have to reject the application. So it is really important to try to stay within these dates and time frames. Okay, and um, so 
these two slides are um, about the activities that these funds can help you with or help your organization with. We have divided the activities into, into two categories. The first one we are calling language access, and those are activities that facilitate um, accessibility of programs to community members with limited proficiency in English. The second type of activities um, are focused in community engagement and outreach. So the RFA provides detailed um, explanation of both activities and the expenses or some of the expenses that are allowed under each activity. Um, I'm going to go over this quickly, but language access includes any translation of programs, materials, um, your website, anything that helps promote home ownership and home buyer services into any non-English language spoken by uh, community members in your area of service. It also includes interpretation, providing interpretation for any language, including American Sign Language, and that could be interpretation in person, via telephone, virtual, so any, any different type of interpretation that you may need. Um, it includes informing the public about your language services, letting them know they can request it, and that can be done through social media, printing signs for your office, updating materials, updating your website, um, working with community or partners, so just in, in different methods to let people know that these services are available. Um, it also includes developing a language access plan, which is a very specific type of plan to provide language services um, for organizations that have never provided language assistance. This could be a good first step. It's not you don't have to, but it could be a really good step to plan for the future about how to more consistently and sustainably provide language access services. And then we wanted to build in some flexibility. So any other activities that you feel can contribute to increasing access by community members with limited English proficiency, we are glad to consider. Um, so if you don't see an activity here that you want to implement, you want to propose that as part of your application. The application has a space for these other activities. We just want uh, we want you to tell us about that activity, tell us how you want to implement that, and what would be the um, the costs related to that activity. One more thing I want to say. Um, I'm sorry, I, I feel like I'm saying so much, but uh, one more thing I want to say is that in the RFA document, each activity has a list of what we are calling allowable expenditures. So it's a, it's a non-inclusive list, but it's a guide of what expenditures we think align with the goals of the grant, with the values of the agency, and it's just a guide to help you plan um, how, to, how to spend those funds. Okay. Um, Community outreach and engagement includes activities that help you promote your services through events um, or marketing, and that, that again includes any type of marketing like printed materials, radio, TV, um, social media. You can partner with local ethnic media to do these um, attempts. You can host sorry, events, you can host events or you can attend events in the community in areas where um, you know that your services typically don't reach those areas. You can host an event there, you can partner with the community. So there's a lot of options in that category or activity. Um, you can also offer your services in locations and formats that are more meaningful and familiar to some communities. So for example, if you host um, education, um, home ownership education workshops, or if you um, do like a financial planning workshop, you could take that workshop to the community, um, or you could record that workshop and add American Sign Language. So any type of um, just 
kind of taking your services and, and changing the format so it's more accessible, those costs can be covered under this, that second activity. Um, we can also help you purchase or develop materials or curriculums that are more um, culturally responsive and reflect the diversity in your service area, um, whether that is video, audio, printed, updating your website again. Um, and then we want to help you build and strengthen relationships with communities and community organizations that are more culturally specific that also can take many forms. Um, so again, we just want you to propose and let us know what specifically you may need as part of your application. Um, this category also includes some training for staff um, about access, civil rights, equity, diversity, inclusion. Um, I encourage you to see the details. We also included like in the language access, a list of allowable expenditures um, as a guide. Some of these activities have some guidelines. So, for example, the training, we can cover the cost of registration and transportation, um, but we have limited the number of staff that we can help pay for transportation and the number of um, airplane trips too. So there's some limitations. I just wanted to call your attention to that. Okay, so if you are awarded a grant, um, you will submit quarterly reports on your activities and expenditures. So the report has two parts. One uh, where we focus on the narrative of what you are doing, what you're working on, um, what you're learning through the process, and one where you report your expenditures. Um, both formats we we it's a sample of the form that you're going to be using, and we attach that to the grant agreement sample um, that is attached to the RFA. So you can take a look at the reports and see how they look. Um, let us know if you have any comments or questions about those two. Um, the estimated due dates for those reports are October, January, April, and July after the end of the grant. Um, as part of your requirements as a grantee, it's also participation in a conversation with other grantees and OHCS about your process, about how um, these funds are being used in the community, and about how we as an organization can continue shaping this grant and this program in a way that is more um, effective for you and more meaningful for the community. Um, and lastly, we are going to ask you to take some pictures, gather quotes, um, testimonials, and just document your process so that we can also illustrate the impact of these funds um, to advocate for, for future funds and really to be able to, to have a more um, tangible uh, product to see how these funds are helping you and the community. Okay, um, before applying and to apply, uh, we want you to register in Oregon Vice, and I'm going to pass it on to Amanda to just let us know and let the people who are new what's Oregon Vice and why it is so important that all of you, if you want to go through this opportunity, are registered in Oregon Vice. So Amanda, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Magda. Um, as she mentioned, we highly encourage all of you to register as a supplier in Oregon Buys. Um, if you're registered under a different type of account, such as a basic purchaser account or um, anything like that, you will not be able to access the RFA within Oregon Buys. Um, you can only see that posting if you're registered as a supplier or if you're completely logged out of the system. Um, I do highly encourage you to register as a supplier either way because we do post all of our solicitation opportunities within Oregon Buys. So you have the opportunity um, for all of our future funding and grants and things like that. You will be notified as soon as those are posted through the system. Also, um, we are accepting um, RFA responses via email directly to me, but you can also upload all of your responses directly through Oregon Buys. 
Um, that way you get notified of the entire process as we go through it via email from the system. Um, so there are a lot of reasons to go ahead and register as a supplier. If you decide to start that process and you run into any issues, please contact me via email or my cell phone number. I'm happy to help you guys out with that. And if you have any struggles um, when it comes time to posting your response to the RFA, I am also here to help you guys with that either way. Um, if there are any questions about registering as a supplier, please feel free to reach out to me or post those in the chat and we can talk about it at the end of the presentation. Thanks, Magda. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I was just looking at the questions. There's some really good questions, so we'll go over that. We're almost done here. Um, let me just cover a couple more things and then we'll um, start with the questions. Um, OK, I think Amanda may just have said this too, but this is her information. Um, and just a couple of tips again for the application. You need to apply using attachment C is the application form that we've created for this opportunity. It's um, it's not a very long application, I would say. I think it's like three pages. So please use that form. Um, also, like it is important to stay within the schedule of the procurement opportunity. It's also very important to stay within the word limit for the application. Um, in this case, not all of the questions have a word limit, but some do. And sadly, any words that are after the limit will be redacted and the evaluators won't be able to see. So just um, kind of have an ask to stay within the word limit. Um, the application needs to be signed by the authorized representative of your organization and then please apply before the deadline, uh, June 7th at 4 p.m. And like Amanda said, you can apply through Oregon Vice or you can send your application packet via email to Amanda. Um, hey, Magda, really quickly. Yes, um, yes. I do, I do want to add just really fast that the June 7th deadline um, has the possibility of being extended. So if you do like register as a supplier within Oregon Buys, um, the system will notify you via email if we end up uploading an addendum to the solicitation that might change the schedule. So if you want to be kept up to date, um, that would be another reason to register as a supplier with Oregon Buys so that you get those system notifications. Thank you. Um, OK, and once you apply, um, the application will be evaluated by a group of OSGS staff um, from different programs. There are 100 points possible for each um, application, and we are looking at different aspects of the organizations that are applying. So the first one is your qualifications, so whether you meet the yeah, your qualifications, how qualified are you to, to provide these services and how ready are you to use those funds? So there's a section, uh, a chunk of questions that try to get these answers that's worth 30 points. Uh, we're also looking at the need for funding, and this is where we want to hear from you why this funding would be important for your community and what can your organization do to start meeting that need. Um, so that that section is worth 25 points. And then the last section is your implementation plan. So if you were granted the funds, how would you carry out those activities? Um, and that part is 45 points. Um, we've created a scoring guide uh, to help the evaluation be more consistent and transparent. Uh, and that is also part of the RFA is attachment D. So that is going to show you how we are going to evaluate and score your applications. OK, so I think uh, we've gone through most of the uh, big aspects. So I'm going to just look at some of the questions in the chat. Um, and then if anybody, if anybody wants to unmute and ask questions also, please feel free. 
Um, I think the first question I see here is about staff time being limited to 13%. And what if the staff person is the, if a staff person will be the person um, that's providing language services? So this is a really good question. I, uh, when I talked about the allowable expenditures in for each activity, um, the translation and interpretation activities have some um, limitations in in how the funds can be used. I think the the most important thing to note is that we want uh, we're hoping that translation and interpretation services are provided by professional translators and interpreters, so we can only allow up to 13% of the grant for the staff time. However, we uh, prefer that the translation and interpretation services are contracted with professionals. Um, there's several ways to demonstrate professional proficiency as a translator uh, or interpreter. So there's some options that are also explaining the RFA, but it is important for us to try to um, just have translations and interpretations that are um, of very high quality because of the materials that we are translated, the complexity of the home buying process, home buying education, financial education, um, sometimes mediation services too, and process that involve a lot of legal vocabulary. Um, so uh, having being bilingual and and being a translator or interpreter have different skills. We know bilingual people who are bilingual have different levels of proficiency um, and they have different levels of proficiency in in both languages. Um, so to ensure consistency and accuracy and quality, those um, services should be contracted. Uh, are just provided by professionals. Um, the materials of the RHA, the RFA um, will be posted in Oregon Vice. This question, I think that's what this question is. Will you be sending all the materials via email? Uh, so all the materials of the RHA, RFA um, application attachments um, and samples of documents are posted on Oregon Vice, and you'll be able to see them there when you are registered. Um, and to answer just to second Michelle's comment, um, the application and attachments must be uploaded through Oregon Vice. Yes, you can also apply by emailing the materials directly to Amanda. Um, will you show us where and how to submit an application through the portal? So that's a good question. I'm going to go back to this slide um, for Oregon buys really quickly. I can also jump in on this one. Um, yes, please. We're happy to assist if, if you run into issues, but we did detail um, instructions in the RFA, it's under section 4.5. Um, we give detailed instructions on how to submit your application through the system. However, if you run into any issues, um, feel free to reach out. We'll try our best to help. You can also reach out directly to Periscope or DAS, um, which I'm happy to provide their email. If you have any system needs that we can't help out with, um, they usually reply pretty quickly. Okay, awesome. Um, and here in that slide is are also those that contact information for you. Um, okay. Um, did register me as a vendor. I was able to access the RFA. I'm assuming supplying supplier and vendor are the same. Um, I think Amanda, that question is for you. Um, <clears throat> supplier and vendor, um, I, I think, are used interchangeably in the system. Um, they should be the same type of account. If you um, are having trouble pulling it up, even under a supplier account, please reach out to Periscope. That's not something that we can assist with at OHCS, um, but that email and their phone number is linked right there. 
And to go ahead and answer, this kind of is in line with some of the other questions after this. Can you register multiple users um, from the same organization? This is not something that we have the answer to. I highly encourage re reaching out to Periscope with that email or phone number and asking them. Um, you might be able to, but that's just not something we have the answer to. So if that's what you're struggling with, please reach out to Periscope under the email and they should be able to assist you that way. And Amanda, what about this next question is, how can we tell if we are registered as a supplier or not? Um, that's a good question. You should, let me, you should be able, when you sign into your account, it should tell you under your account, if you, at the top right, at the top right corner of the Oregon Buys homepage screen, when you're logged in, it has an icon with a little person in it, and that's basically where you go for your account. Under your name, it should tell you what type of account you're logged in under. So if I'm logged in right now, I see it's under a basic purchasing account. If you see anything other than supplier or vendor, um, you probably are not logged in under the right account. But that is another Periscope question. So if you believe your account is a supplier account and it's not showing is that, please reach out to Periscope. Okay. Thank you. Um, this next question is why Oregon buys and not Procorum? Um, and Scott, I think the answer is that both of those have different functionalities. So we will be actually using both. Uh, through Oregon buys, you will receive all the materials, communications about the RFA, uh, you'll be able to apply to Oregon Buys and follow your application process to that. Uh, Procorum is a system that we use for once you are granted. When you, once you have a grant, Procorum is a system that we use just to exchange files. Um, so we'll have some, that's where you can upload your reports. Uh, we will send some communications through them. So they are, they have different functions. We'll be using both and uh, for People who have never used Procorum uh, before, we can we can work on that together. It's not, uh, I would say it's easier than Oregon Vice. Yeah, so we can learn that together too. Um, for clarification, the deadline for application is June 7th, not 2nd. I apologize if I said that. It's June 7th, it's Friday by 4 p.m. Um, Carlos, the admin for my organizations added me as user, but the email confirmation with a link to complete the process didn't work. Okay. I think that may be, um, I think you may be also talking about Oregon bias. So I think that's another issue that can be uh, resolved working with Periscope. Um, so I would just refer you to that. Um, I'll put, oh, there's Amanda's email in the chat again. Um, looks like more issues um, registering with Oregon Vice. So Sonia, I would also encourage you to reach to Periscope. You can email or call both of them. Um, how many grantees are we awarding? That's a good question. I think, um, well, be transparent i think we have funding for 18 grantees this time with the maximum grant amount um so we'll depending on the evaluations and the amount everybody is requesting we will do our best to fund the most uh applications we can with the maximum amounts that we can within the limit of the grant um yeah, so 70,000 is the maximum award. Um, some organizations may request less funding. I would say that uh, this is the second time that we offer this grant. The and, and it's also um, an offering of this type with funding for language access and community engagement. I think it's unique. Um, so there's a lot of learning and preparation that applicants and grantees have done to decide how to use these grants. Um, so the need may be different for each region. The capacity to use these uh, funds may be different. So it is okay to apply for a smaller amount and, and start like learning the process. Um, it is okay to apply for a smaller amount and focus on one or two activities. 
Um, it is also OK to apply for the full grant and have a more comprehensive plan. So really, it depends on where your organization is in the spectrum, uh, what's the need in your community, what's your capacity to implement this. Um, so there's no preference for like smaller or bigger applications. Uh, you just tell us the need and what's your capacity and we'll evaluate that and work with you in that way. Um, is it possible to see the evaluation criteria again? Yes, let me go back to that slide. I don't remember, maybe it's after this. Um, and again, it's also posted in with the RFA. And we have the um, evaluation guide, guide, which has very detailed, um, very detailed information about how each question is scored. So there in the screen, you can see the three areas that we'll be focusing on, qualifications and readiness, the need for funding, and your implementation plan. Um, we employ professional translator interpreters in our organization. Can this be applied not as a staff time, but as a professional interpreter? Hmm, that is a good question. Um, I want to say um, maybe yes, but I think I want to take that question back. Uh, and and discuss it internally just to make sure that I am giving you an accurate answer um, and we'll, we'll respond to this in writing. So thank you for that question. The link to the document detailing submission via Oregon Vice has an error. Okay. If you're experiencing um, any issues accessing the RFA, please feel free to reach out to me via email and I can help you with that outside of um, the pre-bid conference. However, um, if you're not able to access it due to an Oregon buys error, please reach out to the Oregon buys help desk um, and they should be able to support you. Okay. Um, Okay, I have a, here a question uh, by Um. It says we're serving many different languages like Mandarin, Vietnamese, Thai, etc. Would you like us to apply as an organization to cover all the communities we're serving, or should our project managers apply for their own program language? Um, so Um, I'm gonna try and answer, but if if I don't cover what you need, let me know. Um, I think many organizations cover multiple. Like, areas where multiple language communities live, um, you can create a plan to serve several of those language speakers, or you can also decide um, if there's a priority, like for example, to do more translations and interpretations and community engagement with one or some of these communities. So I think it's up to you if, the, if you want um, your plan to be to reach broadly or to reach more specifically to some of those communities. Um, does that answer your question or did I not quite get it? Feel free to come and mute yourself. Um, while we hear from Um, I'm going to answer the next question about the start date of the grant. Is it the date of execution or the date um, we should expect when should we expect the grant to be executed? So um, this year we are going to start the grant from the day you are uh, notified that you will be awarded. Um, so once you have heard from us that you are going to receive a grant, you can start implementing your activities using the funds and then we'll um, disperse the funds. Last time we let grantees know of the award and then there was a process to create the contract sign uh, before they could start spending funds. I think that uh, created a delay for a lot of grantees. We had a really short time frame last year. Um, so this time we want to do it differently. We are going to start from the day you are awarded the grant. Um, and Sonia, if you can sing 
um, how can you see the application while you resolve the registration problems? Yeah, I think this again, this is something to work with um, Amanda and uh, with Oregon Vice Technical Assistance. Are the dollar limits to paying stipends to agencies or attendees if we are holding focus groups at other agency locations? Um, so we have um, dollar limits on stipends to community members um, that participate or are engaged in some activities. You will see which activities those are. Um, the limit is, I think, 120, up to $120 per participant per event. Um, there's no limits in in any like agreements or contracts that you do with agencies. Um, you may collaborate contract with other organizations or agencies for specific activities. Um, you would tell us about the plan to do that in your application and uh, how that contract or agreement meets the need. Um, you know, we're looking at how reasonable the, the expenditures are. So yeah, if you have plans to work with other agencies, just let us know through your application. And the next question is, can we use these funds to make website upgrades recommended with the accessibility audit that you had last year? Yes. Yes. So anything that you can make to make um, your programs, services more accessible to people with um, limited English, communication barriers due to a disability um, or underserved communities, I think is a yes. Um, can we use the funds for bilingual staff to earn their professional Spanish translation certificate? Um, there's a component of training um, in the grant, so I would um, say take a look at the description of that activity and some of the expenditures. Um, we also want the funds to really be in benefit of the community. Um, you know, I think if this is something that you feel your organization needs, uh, we can evaluate it as part of your application. Um, and again, I would just say the focus right now is to obtain translations and interpretations from professional translators. Um, is the 10% admin included in the total 7K? Yes. So um, you'll be granted an amount, and of that amount, 10% can be used for administrative um, expenses. So it is part of your grant. OK, Scott, um, third party translation services don't fulfill the need for language access. Building relationships and trust in the community is very important. We are committed to hiring bilingual staff uh, who are experts in affordable housing. It would better serve the community to be able to use the funds for translations and outreach activities by your staff. Um, we have we gave this feedback last year. Yeah, um, yeah, I think Scott, we understand that is something that we have been thinking about internally. Um, that relationship with your staff is really, really important. Um, so we I think one of the things we did is create some space in this grant for that to support your staff that that's, that's already that's already part of your organization to be able to do more of this work. Um, there is a balance. We also want to allow for collaboration with more culturally specific organizations um, and again to include some professional services. So we we I think we build some space for that. Um, but it is important that you look at the structure of the grant um, and kind of the values and then within that um, see how your the, the needs in your community can be met through the funds. Okay, good. I hear back from Um, so thank you. Uh, sorry, you can oh my goodness, is everybody blocked? Is anybody is everybody blocked from <laughs> from talking from unmuting? Okay. I'm going to look into that um, right now. OK. Um,
Okay. Okay, so I think I've um, <clears throat> kind of covered all the, the questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to, um, if there's any additional questions and you can type them, um, I'm going to take a quick look and see if I can allow, allow um, you to unmute. I see some hands up. I see immediately have a question. So let me see if I can. Okay, Miguel, I think you can ask your question. Hi, Magda. Thank you for uh, the time and, and opportunity. I think my question was already answered, but, uh, oh, no, no, uh, there was one another. So we actually employ professional uh, translators, interpreters, and uh, there's the section about staff time, right? And in this case, for us that we already employ these professionals, would that incur into staff time or would that incur into professional interpreters and translators? Yeah, um, thank you for that question. Um, I think I wanna get back to you with that answer. I wanna make sure that I'm giving the correct answer before I respond. Um, So yeah, I will uh, we'll respond to that in writing, but it's not it. Thank you. Thank you. I think the way this works, if, if anybody else um, has a question, you can raise your hand and then I'll be able to unmute you. I think I can unmute everybody at the same time, but uh, I'll be happy to unmute anybody that has um, raises the hand or just lets me know through the chat that you um, have a question. If anyone has any other questions after the pre-bid conference has ended, um, you all may submit those questions to me until May 17th at 4 p.m. Um, and then we will reply with all of your questions and answers in a document that will be uploaded to Oregon Vice. So this isn't your only opportunity to ask questions. Um, you have a little over a week left to submit any questions in writing as well. Okay, I'm going to put in the chat here the bid number, Sonia, for you, and I'm going to add um, my email address and Amanda's email address. I I don't I won't be able to answer questions after the session, but Amanda will. So if please send your questions to her. Um, thank you so much for being here. We have a couple more minutes. Uh, if anybody wants to stay until noon. Um, we can be here otherwise. I think that we've covered most of the questions that you have. Um, again, thank you for for your um, interest and uh, for being here today and for all the good questions. We'll post all the answers to um, in a document soon. Thank you so much. All right, so there in the chat is uh, the bid number, Amanda's email address um, of the people that are still here today, uh, or still, if you have a question, please raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, okay, Sonia, you have a good question there. Can organizations reapply even if they have received the grant before? Yes, they can. Thank you, Sonia, for being here.
Okay, so I think I'm not seeing um, any additional questions. Um, and I think I'm gonna um, then go ahead and finish this webinar. Thank you um, again for being here for your questions. Um, and we hope to hear from you. Thank you, Amanda, for your help today. Um, oh, and Miguel, here's, um, yeah, I'll put my email in the chat too. Um, uh, and she is put the Oregon from the go. Okay, there it is. All right. Um, I think we're we're good. Thank you again, and we'll we'll hear from you soon. Thank you, Amanda. We'll see you soon. Bye.